Curator has seen a tremendous amount of investment since I did my video What Makes Curator So Special years ago. So the idea of this view of this video is to update uh, on the stuff that are new and keep making Curator, in my view, the very best as I am out there. Some things remain the same, like uh, when you install Curator for the first time, physically or virtually, uh, you actually, uh, all you need to do is go into the network hierarchy and define what's your local network and what's on your DMC, so Curator can know what's in and what's out. And once you've done that, what you need to do is really point the log sources that you have to the Curator IP address and the vast majority of them get actually auto-discovered meaning, oh, Curator sees, oh, this is a checkpoint firewall log, uh, I know how to interpret that, and then all the rules that uh, works for firewall rules uh, begin uh, to fire. Examples where you need to actually define your logs, is, for example, logs in the cloud, like Office 365, or oh, you need to provide a token, and this is a pool that, that you do every five minutes or so from the cloud to get the logs, but uh, in almost every case logs are out to discover so there's no effort uh, to do that same thing with the flows you just start sending the flows uh, uh, to curator and once you've done that a very powerful set of rules and that to me is the, the main value in curator these rules keep getting updated you can see the gazillion number of rules that are in the product and those uh, rules begin to work for you uh, and begin to generate offenses. An offense is a thing that calls your attention. You need to re-image that book. You need to call HR about this, uh, this particular individual. Uh, the other thing that Curator does by virtue of the flogs and logs is actually discover all the servers that are out there. And that's actually something that customers appreciate uh, very, very much. You see, well, uh, somebody put an FTP server without telling me, probably that's something I should know about it because I'm sure it's uh, actually full of holes. And, and, and that, that remains uh, true and good uh, today. You can complement that server discovery capability by virtue of the logs and flows with uh, sending optionally network scanner data. And that helps on, on Curator to know more details about everything that's out there. All that remains good and true, but one thing that Curator added recently is the capability of not just doing logs and flows, but also on the payload. There is a new component, relatively new component, called QNI, that basically extracts uh, more than 40 fields from the payload. This is not log and flows, again, this is inspecting the payload, like DNS query uh, response fields. If somebody's doing command and control by putting stuff on the text fields there. Uh, that, I mean, like that, there are 40 fields at that. But also, very importantly, it actually computes hashes. And you see a lot of uh, talk about hashes on the new things on Curator of every file that come across the network. Uh, on your network, every file, I compute the hash. And hashes are very good because they, they eliminate the false positive and they allow you to detect malicious artifacts out there the minute they traverse uh, your network. To keep this video relatively short, I'm putting links to, uh, to uh, detailed videos that show these capabilities. So for a detailed video of Q&I, in the video description, there is a link to it. One of the things that Curator has kept on enhancing is the, its API. Everything on the product is exposed with the right uh, access right uh, in and out on the product. You can write into the asset database of Curator. Uh, you can read uh, data, offenses, uh, everything that is in the product that you do from the GUI, you can do from the API. And that has really promoted uh, a tremendous success of what is called the Curator App Exchange. This app exchange is uh, a collection of free apps. The only one that is an exception is the Watson. We will talk about that later. Uh, of very good uh, IBM as well as IB, uh, non-IBM and even IBM competitors 
uh, applications and you see that you know the list is really uh, very extensive in here and these apps are curated by IBM it's not that everybody can post this stuff over here IBM make sure that they, they are written right and they are not going to uh, damage the performance of your curator box but uh, it really generates a tremendous amount of uh, interaction with other products and not only with other products but also in terms of new rules if you want to have uh, sophisticated rules that we don't want to you know load the, the products with all those uh, for example if you have some Palo Alto and you want to have some rules coming there you use still be also with these packages you, you can get sophisticated rules ready for you to use so it's very rare now these days that you will be actually writing rules in Curator you most likely will be modifying existing one and there are some interesting uh, applications that I would like to uh, talk about in terms of the integration the first one will be the big fix one so the first thing is that with big fix you can actually have daily or twice a day if you want to get the information that big fix knows about what's vulnerable on every endpoint on the enterprise straight into curator who can scan every day normally the best I normally see is scans every week uh, but with big fix again you get all what is always vulnerability data up to the minute that you that 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 uh, the scan results are produced you get them into curator and you can actually from this with this integration you can right click on an ip address and go and real real time figure out what is actually vulnerable out there so you you also get a full visibility into what's in that particular endpoint so you're investigating an offense on a particular endpoint so you can see everything that's that's seen there you can see not only memory and, and type of cpu and what's vulnerable there but what software have was installed in the last 30 days that might be important when you are doing an investigation what files have changed in the last 30 days that might be very interesting and also from those files give me the hashes again making emphasis on hashes so i can uh, is this cal.exe well let me actually take the hash go to virus total and check whether it's really cal.exe or not uh, so you also have the capability of doing automated automated uh, remediation you for example can f see or detect that uh, a particular endpoint is misbehaving you can actually ask big fix automatically from an offense that's what is called custom action that's a new thing in curator to actually for example quarantine that particular endpoint or stop a ransomware uh, when you detect that it's doing too many file updates in a short period of time in order to save parts of the data i mean the, the sky's the limit and again there's a link to a video that shows this in more detail in the video description another remarkable package is the sysmon one in which allows you to add this is a free uh, not only a free package but also the sysmon is a free capability from windows that you can actually add to the windows logs very sophisticated inside uh, information about the processes that they get created the parents where is this launch uh, but also hashes of every every uh, process of the air so you can with this and and, and this packaging career you can detect sophisticated and obfuscated malware attacks that for example uses PowerShell with base 64 encoding and, and, and concatenations and escape characters and all the tricks that hackers use to hide their, their attacks well if you deploy the Sysmon app those things will not be hidden anymore another example is the UBA app with the UBA app what you get is uh, very detailed analysis on the risk being carried by every one of your internal users and it uses a, con a, a, a connection to your LDAP to actually extract all the user IDs for every individual so the, the risk is actually added as a, a sophisticated machine learning algorithm that actually allows you to create the baseline of what's normal out there and when people begin to deviate what they normally do and that can reflect either somebody going bad or it may reflect uh, some apt that has compromised a valid credential 
great tool that is included, not only included in Free Green Curator, but also works within the same product. So it's not like all the things out there that you need to take data out from your SIEM, process them, and then analyze it. No, all this happens inside, and every offense can actually make that make it uh, to be contribute to the risk score of the particular individual great uh, uh, great uh, application but the UBA will give you a lot of detail about the inside Watson is mostly all about the outside when I have an offense and I don't have the time to be doing you know you know open a notepad and start getting hashes and DLL names and executable names and going to virus total to into this forum and spend a lot of time uh, looking at what is actually out there I can actually ask Watson hey Watson what do you know about this so you send up this particular offense uh, into into Watson and Watson say well you know this is the data in gray is the information that you send me and is a graphical representation of where the guy actually went to and how the traffic flow and those arrows but let me tell you i see a lot of uh, everything that is in blue is additional stuff that is not in the fence you send to curator and i see a lot of additional information that you may want to actually check for uh, check that information in your in your current traffic because it might reflect that somebody else is falling a victim of that and, and for example it, it can highlight the fact that hey Watson think that is the cosy duke behind this type of attack or why do you think about that Watson well here's the reference and you know you can actually see uh, the the threat data so you can actually see that you know there is a reference to 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 a feed and, and there is a hash and again you'll see curator leveraging more and more in hashes to eliminate false positives that come with IP addresses, URL and host name. We, we we still keep using, but when you get a hit on a hash, there's no coincidence. That's the, the that that particular attack. It used to be that in curator when you have to write a parser, it wasn't an intuitive thing. All that changed with the addition of the DSM editor which allows you to create easily <laughs> I got, there's a link to a video that I showed creating one in 10 minutes uh, preserving the good taxonomy that had made Curator so special one example of the taxonomy is that for example if you have an IPS or any other uh, device that detects type of attack and you label when you are creating a DSM a particular attack as a potential exploit that goes into a category that curator has a default rule for it and also if curator is fed with scanner data that tells us what's vulnerable there curator connects the dots with that default rule and say well that particular host is vulnerable to that particular type of attack and you get an offense firing that indicate a potential exploit uh, that, that's actually very very powerful because if you have left a particular vulnerability out because you couldn't patch it because it breaks some stuff well, at least you want to monitor it very closely and curator does that out of the box again now you can create those uh, beautiful custom build DSN that will respect the taxonomy and will leverage on all the good rules that curator has curator can be installed as an all-in-one appliance or a distributed architecture in which you have a console and then you have event processor and event collectors and and you can grow geographically or, or as your needs uh, increases on the traffic you can actually add more boxes all these boxes are the same boxes uh, basically and you can just repurpose them by uh, adding uh, uh, the license for uh, for a particular box so they say that you have your all-on-one well now that will be only a console and then the additional boxes uh, get uh, uh, deployed geographically and uh, again by specifying the license you tell the box how is it going to behave but we also to this nice uh, uh, distributed ar ar architecture uh, th 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 there was a, a, an important addition it used to be that in the past, when you were performing a search, the search needs to get data, and basically the bulk of the search gets actually executed on the event processor. But the event processor is actually main 
main purpose in life is actually to, to process events. So he gave priority to that. So it used to be that maybe the searches were not as fast as they could possibly could have been. Well, and for that, Curator added the data node, which is basically a full processor with some storage capability as well to add all CPU and memory just to perform the searches. Now, searches in Curator has nothing to envy to any other uh, SIM out there. Uh, in fact, it ex exceeds most of them. But uh, not only that, but also uh, one more box that was added is actually the app node. Applications like uh, UBA, they, they take a lot of memories, particularly if you have a lot of users to keep track of the machine learning, of what is it that every user is doing. Well, now you can actually run those on the app node. And the advantage of this type of nodes is that they don't require any license. I mean, they can be physical appliance or virtual appliance, whatever you want to have them. And they just add to your uh, specialized performance for your specific application. A new box that was added, and I mentioned it before, is actually the Q&I, which actually feeds, process all the incoming traffic, and then extract those 40 fields and compute those hashes and send those as flows so the, the rules can fire and, and, and work for you in the same way. So, And I will not be surprised if IBM keeps adding more of these nodes uh, to for specialized uh, performance and the advantage is that they, they require no license, so they are very uh, easy to be added. Now, in terms of training, how do I get enabled for Curator? A couple of additions that are being added to the, to the roster. The first is that there is a free training in Curator uh, for the, for the uh, Security Academy that actually you can even launch virtual uh, curator boxes that you use to run the course. Very, very, very good capability. Also, if you Google Open Mic, you can find sessions in which the group of IBM developers come together and answer questions from the from the users, discuss uh, topics, and they're actually uh, very good. Of course, uh, you have this channel. And in the video section, I also put a link to a PDF that contains the uh, 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 the, the links to m most of my uh, videos on this subject. Once you have acquired some knowledge around Curator, uh, I strongly recommend you to get registered for what is called master classes, in which our top, more ex most experienced uh, curator guys and developers come together for a week and they, boy, they deliver a, a free class that is spectacular to increase your uh, knowledge around curator. And another great way of actually getting uh, you know, familiar with curator is that pretty soon there's going to be uh, a release of a free curator called the Community Edition for non-production and I will put uh, a link into this video description as, sh as soon as that uh, becomes available. And one thing that I would like to close this video with is tuning. In contrast with most tools out there, where you have to have a PhD on the tool and put a lot of effort to begin to see things, Curator is just the opposite. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, define your network hierarchy, fit this point the stuff to it and the rules begin to generate offenses uh, and those offenses need to be tuned especially with the network hierarchy and, and you need to you know tweak some parameters in here because curator is just the opposite of those tools that you need to put a lot of work in it it's actually delivered a lot of value for you but you need to tune and see what is actually relevant to your environment or not I have put a video uh, uh, on, on the subject and also there's a very good set of uh, open mic uh, videos that talks about uh, tuning uh, uh, curator but again this is this is what you will spend your time with it it's actually benefiting from the offenses and and then tuning to make sure that you only get offenses for things that call your attention thing that needs to be actually be done